Game week three is upon us. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I got on in game week two, my plans for game week three, my answers to some key questions for this round. Let's get into it. Right, so starting with game week two, first of all. So I didn't have the best week this week. Finished on 41 points, actually below the average of 44, but that is quite a low average anyway, and a lot of people have struggled. Turner didn't keep that clean sheet that I hoped he would against Sheffield United. He did concede one, so he only ended up in two points, although it did turn out to be the right choice out of him and Pickford who got zero. Esther Poonan pulled through once again and made the team of the week. He got 11 points for a goal and an assist. He's a must have right now. He's in brilliant form. And despite people talking about moving on their Brighton assets from game week four onwards, I don't think that's the case right now for him. Chilwell didn't have as bright a start as he did in his first game against Liverpool. Obviously Chelsea lost 3-1 to West Ham and he got subbed off in the 60th minute. Bit disappointing but some good fixtures coming up for him. Rico Henry paid off nicely with five points. Could have been more but he did get a yellow card. Obviously the points that he did accumulate with the clean sheet. Gabriel continues to be the problem child for FPL. He once again didn't make it into the starting lineup. He only managed 20 minutes. More on him shortly. Villa had a very good result against Everton, winning 4-0. Musa Diaby actually looked very good, but he wasn't involved in the goals or assists, so just the three points for him. Now, my gamble to play Salah as my captain sort of did and didn't pay off. It paid off because he got more points than Haaland, so he was the right choice to change to captaincy, but it didn't pay off because I was hoping for higher returns from him. Of course, he did score. That was from a penalty, but he also lost points for missing the penalty in the first place, so definitely a mixed bag for him. He could actually be on double his points if his disallowed goal against Chelsea counted. He probably should have scored another against Bournemouth as well. So a bit of a tricky one, quite hard to justify his price right now. Saka and Madison both picked up three points. Both of their teams won, but they weren't able to contribute. João Pedro is our second problem child right now. Obviously Brighton have got so much depth that he actually ended up on the bench for this game and only managed 33 minutes. Also picked up a yellow card, so lost points there. Holland, of course, wasn't involved in the one goal against Newcastle, so just the two points for him as well. Not great to be below the average, but we're only two games in. As I've said before, sometimes you do need to take some red arrows to get green arrows in future game weeks, so I'm not too panicked. Right, so what are we doing for game week three? So I have used my one free transfer to bring in a kanji and he is coming for Gabriel. Now, obviously some people have talked about keeping a hold of Gabriel. Tommy Yasu went in as the timber replacement on Monday, but of course he got red carded. So it's actually even more likely that Gabriel is gonna to return to the starting lineup for the Fulham match. The reason I wanted to move him on is because he was about to fall in price, which he has this week. So you're gonna lose some value in your squad. And I just don't want that uncertainty around whether he's gonna play. So for me, it was time to move him on. I brought in a Kanji who's currently 5.1 million. I got him just before the price rise, so I only paid 5 million. Now, this is a risk. I have talked before about being wary of the Pep Roulette, but for me, it seems that Kanji is the most nailed on defender for City right now. He's played all four matches for them this season, including the Community Shield and the Super Cup. And I think he's a pretty safe bet until the Champions League fixtures start for City in September after the international break. City have got really good fixtures coming up. They've kept two clean sheets, so this felt like a gamble worth taking. Now, Pickford returns in goal for me. Everton obviously have haven't been great but Wolves haven't really been either they've not been scoring many goals this feels a bit like a nil-nil for me so I'm sticking with Pickford for now and he's going back in I've currently put Madison onto my bench because he did pick up a knock and he was seen with a protective boot on as he was leaving the ground it sounds like it's fairly unlikely that he's going to play on Saturday so that might be a late call for me but right now he's on my bench otherwise I'm still pretty happy with the team that I've picked they've got some good fixtures this week I don't feel the need to make too many transfers or make any transfers that are going to cost me points right now now the only other player that I would was oven and iron about was João Pedro. Obviously he got benched last weekend and some started to worry about whether he's a nailed on asset. I was thinking the same until I saw that Ntaiso was injured this week in training. So I'm willing to hold on to him. I think he is going to probably start or at least get a good amount of minutes against West Ham. He is teetering on the edge of being my next transfer though. So this week's definitely one to watch for him. So now time to answer a few key questions for this week. Firstly, is it time to wildcard? A lot of people online have been very frustrated with their game week two teams. They're ready to use their wildcard. Is that the right choice? My personal view is no. And this goes back to something I said in preseason, which is no one has won FPL using their wild card in the first two weeks. Not a lot of people had a good game week two, so it's not like you'd have fallen behind the pack too much. Unless you've unfortunately found yourself in a position where you've managed to pick Reese James, John Stones, Gabrielle, Madison, who could be injured too. Unless you've managed to pick four, five, six players that aren't going to feature or are struggling for minutes then I wouldn't be wildcarding yet. Especially because if you wildcard and we all have another average week this week, 
what are you going to do then? So next question, what to do about Gabriel? So I personally have moved him on. That said, I do think he's probably going to feature against Fulham now that Tommy Assi's had the red card. If there are other more pressing areas to use your free transfers in, I would prioritise those over him and either bench him or start him against Fulham. I obviously have moved him on, but that's because other than Pedro, I'm pretty happy with my squad right now. Similarly, what do you do with João Pedro? As I said, I think now that Inciso is injured, it's more likely he's going to return to that starting lineup. Brighton do look pretty fearless at the moment, but they've got some trickier fixtures coming up. They've got Man United in game week four, who haven't looked great, but they're not going to be as easy as the opposition that they face in the first three games. So I'd say hold for this week, see how he gets on, and then consider moving him on for game week four. What should you do with your Man United assets? Man United haven't got off to the best start. Obviously, they had the tight 1-0 win against Wolves, and then they lost 2-0 to Spurs. In particular, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, they haven't been lighting the world up. Bruno Fernandes has got really high expected goal involvement, still hasn't managed to find the back of the net. I would expect at least one of these players to be getting returns this week. And there's a good chance we might see a bit of a tactical reshuffle as well now that it sounds like Holyund is probably set to feature. That could be a real positive for Rashford if he ends up on the wing again. So I'd hold on to those players if you still have them and then assess after game week three. Thank you very much for watching guys. I wish you all the luck for game week three. If you want to keep updated on my FPL content then please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers!